Let me tell you how syphilis is spreading like, well, like syphilis, like wildfire in the United States. This video is for the she's, the he's, the they's, the gays, everybody in between, you need to watch. Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Dr. Jennifer Lincoln, board certified OBGYN, author and educator. And this is the health class you wish you had in high school. And this one especially, you need to watch if you didn't learn about syphilis in high school. And even if you did, we've got a big update because data that just came out shows that syphilis has gone up by 80% in the United States, that's eight zero percent in the past five years. That is bad. And when you look at this, look at these arrows, how they go. You don't wanna see that when you see syphilis going up. You might think it's rare, but it's not. And from 2021 to 2022 alone, those rates went up 17%. So we need to talk about what the heck is going on, why this is happening, and how to not get this sexually transmitted infection. Before I jump in anymore, go ahead and like, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. Okay, so according to the CDC, I'm looking at my computer, actual numbers of syphilis cases. In 2018, we had about 113,000 diagnosed confirmed cases in the US which is a lot, but then we look at 2022, 203,000. It's, it's, it's not good. And so when you look at these numbers, you see that it's not as high as gonorrhea or chlamydia, which are much more common, but it's surging in a way that is not at all like gonorrhea or chlamydia, which are actually going down a little bit. Let me say this, we have the highest syphilis rates in the United States since 1950. 1950 was an interesting time maybe not so good for a lot of reasons, um, but we should not be trying to mimic 1950s syphilis situation, if you know what I mean. And then when you look at this congenital syphilis, which is syphilis that is passed from a pregnant person down to a baby during pregnancy or childbirth, um, that rate is up 30% since 2021. We'll talk about that more later, but I do want you to know that congenital syphilis led to 282 stillbirths or infant deaths related to this in 2022 alone which is not okay. So here are the three reasons that the rates of syphilis are going up in the United States. Number one, substance use. No, you don't get syphilis by drinking beer or using drugs, but you tend not to make as good of decisions when you are under the influence of these substances. And we're seeing that skyrocket in a post-pandemic United States. And what travels with it? Syphilis. The second reason we're seeing this go up is less condom usage. I, like, I feel like it's a personal failure of mine. I've been here and on other platforms for a long time talking about condoms. Come on, people, wrap it up so you don't get the bugs, okay? And the third reason that we're seeing syphilis go up in the United States, fewer clinics that provide sexual health diagnosis and treatment. So yeah, I'm talking about abortion bans that have led to the closure of clinics that yes, do abortions, but also test for STIs. They're not there anymore. So what happens? People don't get tested. So do you see how it's all wrapped up? Okay, what the heck is syphilis? Here is a picture of it. I think it's actually very cute. Not that it's a good thing, but it's a very it's a very cute little bug. It's what we call a spirochete bacteria, which is basically like a corkscrew. So think of that the next time you eat corkscrew pasta, you can, you can think of me and syphilis. More weird things I've said on this channel. Anywho, you can get it through four ways, vaginal sex, oral sex, anal sex. And yes, during pregnancy, if the pregnant woman, pregnant person has syphilis, it can pass to the, to the fetus. There are different flavors of syphilis. So I'm gonna go real quick through these. There's primary syphilis. This is what it looks like here. These are usually sores or a single sore that are painless. You might not even know that you have them. They may last for like three to six weeks. They can go away on their own, but that does not mean you're cured. If you like ignore it long enough, it goes away. No, my friend, you will still have the syphilis infection. You just don't have any active signs at that time. And those can be found around the mouth or around the genitals. This is what secondary syphilis looks like. So the classic thing that we're taught in medical school are a rash on the palms and the feet, which you can see here, but you can also get that elsewhere too. This can start like right after that primary stage or even weeks later. And there are other symptoms that you can see here. We call these systemic symptoms, meaning these are things that you can see in other parts of your body. And you might think, oh gosh, do I have the flu? What's going on? And it could be secondary syphilis. Latent syphilis is what it sounds like. It can go away and you may not have symptoms for years. You might think that was a weird bump I had or a weird rash and then it went away. And then 10 years later, you may have symptoms again. Tertiary syphilis is the next phase of syphilis. It is not super common, but when it happens, it is really, really bad. This can affect 
multiple different organs, like your heart, your blood vessels, your brain, your nervous system. This can actually, if untreated, lead to death. And then lastly, congenital syphilis, which is, like I said, syphilis that's passed from a parent to their, to their developing fetus. It can lead to stillbirth or miscarriage, preterm birth, low birth weight, and also these developmental abnormalities in babies who are born with congenital syphilis. Not something you want during your pregnancy. Okay, who gets it? I'm gonna tell you everyone can get syphilis. And yes, there are more groups that are more affected. You can see those here, but no one is immune. Actually, that's kind of a funny joke because you can have syphilis be treated, you could actually get it again. So <laughs> there's no immunity. My point is, is that there are certain high risk groups, but anyone can get it. And we're seeing increases in all of these groups. Now the national rate of syphilis, in case you're wondering about like the exact number is 17.7 per 100,000 people will have syphilis. However, that number varies greatly depending on where you live and what particular group you may belong to. Coming in at the worst state for syphilis is South Dakota. Not one that you might've thought of, but this was related to an outbreak amongst an indigenous population there. They had a syphilis rate of 84 per 100,000 people. The next state was New Mexico, and that was actually about half of what South Dakota's numbers were. So South Dakota was in a really hard spot. And in case you're curious, these are the worst states for STIs combined, chlamydia, gonorrhea, and syphilis. So if you are having some relations in these states, please be extra careful. Speaking of being careful, one of the best things you can do is know your status and know the status of your partner. This is something that we can easily test for. We can test for syphilis by one of two ways. If you have a lesion, we can swab it. And then they look at it under the microscope and they see that cute little bacteria. It's, again, I know I'm weird. Or you can have a blood test done. In fact, in pregnancy, we test everybody. So at your first prenatal visit, and then depending on where you live, you may be tested more if you live in an area where there are really high levels. But right now in my system, and I know a lot of people, we test again during the third trimester and then when they're admitted to the hospital because we really want to prevent this. And why? Because we can treat it. Okay, fun fact, what is the treatment for syphilis? Do you think it was gonna be something super fancy? Cause it's not, it's a form of penicillin. It's penicillin injections. The dose and how often you need them varies depending on which stage of that syphilis that you have, but it's totally treatable and totally curable. This is why we need to stop the spread. We need to get tested and we need to get treatment so that we don't increase this epidemic that we're seeing in the United States. Okay, as always, I have some phenomenal resources in my show notes below, so please feel free to look at those. What questions do you have about syphilis or comments or anything else, things that I didn't answer, go ahead and drop them in the show notes. Like, share, subscribe, all the things, and come back next week. We'll have some more fun education. And like I said, think about me when you're eating that syphilis pasta. Okay, that was so weird. Why did I end it that way? All right, bye now.